Good morning and welcome to our fifth Sunday of Lent. This morning our father, our celebrant is Father Hickey. And at this time I'd like to remind you please to turn off all your cell phones. Our opening hymn is number 717, Lift High the Cross. Please stand. Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. Good morning. This morning we celebrate the fifth Sunday of Lent. And this Mass is being offered for Bob Berry. My brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins so as to prepare ourselves to celebrate these sacred mysteries. You were sent to heal the contrite of heart, Lord have mercy. You came to call sinners, Christ have mercy. See at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us, Lord have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. By your help we beseech you, Lord our God, may we walk eagerly in that same charity with which out of love for the world, your son handed himself over to death to our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Jeremiah. The days are coming, says the Lord, when I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and the house of Judah. It will not be like the covenant I made with their fathers the day I took them by the hand to lead them forth from the land of Egypt. For they broke my covenant, and I had to show myself their master, says the Lord. But this is the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel after those days, says the Lord. I will place my law within them and write it upon their hearts. I will be their God and they shall be my people. No longer will they have need to teach their friends and relatives how to know the Lord. All from the least to greatest shall know me, says the Lord, for I will forgive their evil doing and remember their sin no more. The word of the Lord. Create a clean heart, a 
of your compassion wipe out my offense. Thoroughly wash me from my guilt and of my sin cleanse me. Create a clean heart, a clean heart in me, O oh God. A clean heart create for me, O oh God, and a steadfast spirit renew within me. Cast me not out from your presence, and your Holy Spirit take not from me. Create a clean heart, a clean heart in me, O oh God. Give me back the joy of your salvation, and a willing spirit sustain in me. Ancestors, your ways and sinners shall return to you. Create a clean heart, a clean heart in me, O A reading from the letter to the Hebrews. In the days when Christ was in the flesh, he offered prayers and supplications with loud cries and tears to the one who was able to save him from death, and he was heard because of his reverence. Son though he was, he learned obedience from what he suffered and when he was made perfect. He became the source of eternal salvation for all who obey him. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ, King of endless glory. With you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Some Greeks who had come to worship at the Passover feast came to Philip, who was from Bethsaida in Galilee, and asked him, Sir, we would like to see Jesus. Philip went and told Andrew. Then Andrew and Philip went and told Jesus. Jesus answered them, The hour has come for the Son of Man to be glorified. Amen, amen, I say to you. Unless a grain of wheat falls to the ground and dies, it remains just a grain of wheat. But if it dies, it produces much fruit. Whoever loves his life loses it. And whoever hates his life in this world will preserve it for eternal life. Whoever serves me must follow me. And where I am, there also will my servant be. The Father will honor whoever serves me. I'm troubled now, yet what should I say? Father, save me from this hour. But it was for this purpose that I came to this hour. Father, glorify your name. Then a voice came from heaven. I've glorified it, and I'll glorify it again. The crowd there heard it and said it was thunder. But others said, an angel has spoken to him. Jesus answered and said, this voice did not come for my sake, but for yours. Now is the time of judgment on this world. 
Now the ruler of this world will be driven out. And when I am lifted up from the earth, I'll draw everyone to myself. He said this indicating the kind of death he would die. The gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Christ. Next Sunday will mark the 44th anniversary of the martyrdom of Saint Archbishop Oscar Romero. Oscar M Romero, who was born in 1917 in the Central American country of El Salvador, was always a faithful priest and bishop totally dedicated to being a pastor and a servant of God. Archbishop Oscar Romero's core desire was to love and serve God through his priestly vocation. That never changed. What changed was his perspective. Becoming Archbishop of San Salvador thrust him into a new reality and a new consciousness. When Bishop Romero was appointed Archbishop of San Salvador in 1977, his appointment was welcomed by the Salvadorian government. Many priests were disappointed because of his conservative reputation would negatively affect the liberation's theology's commitment to the poor. However, when Rutilio Grande, a progressive Jesuit priest, and personal friend of Archbishop Romero was assassinated, his death had a profound impact on Archbishop Romero, who later said, when I looked at Rutilio lying there dead, I thought, if they have killed him for doing what he did, then I must walk the same path. It was if the hour had come for Archbishop Romero. Like Jesus, Archbishop Romero confronted tragic violence, brought to a boiling point, by the murder of the poor and their priests. Romero's love of the people who are poor, his faithfulness to the gospel led him to confront the people, the paramilitary right, who had become captive to their own wealth and power. Risking his life day after day, Archbishop Romero spoke out and walked with his people. Archbishop Oscar Romero gave living witness to what Jesus proclaimed in today's gospel, to what it means to hate this, the life of the world. Archbishop Oscar Romero's life became a walking, talking profession of faith. On March 24, 1980, one day after a sermon in which he had called Salvadorian soldiers as Christians to obey God's higher order and to stop carrying out the government's repression and violations of basic human rights. Archbishop Romero was fatally shot while celebrating mass. Nothing could have been more fitting than his martyrdom during the Eucharistic celebration that proclaims the death and resurrection of Christ. In calling his disciples to hate their life in this world, Jesus is urging them to abandon their doomed desire for self-preservation. Jesus teaches us that you can love your mortal life, but in the end, you will lose it. Jesus promised to lead the way for them, but let's them know that they too must make the journey. Jesus makes no pretense that this is easy. Only those who hate their own instinct for self-preservation can receive eter the eternal life that comes as pure gift. The purpose of Jesus's life was to show the way beyond this world. To ask for escape would ultimately signify lack of the faith in his own vocation. Instead, Jesus chooses to glorify the Father's name. As we heard in today's gospel, Jesus' Father's voice came from heaven saying, I have glorified it and will glorify it again. God has graced us with the example of people who have shown the way to abandon love of the world for the sake of life in God. Let's pray asking for the intercession of Saint Archbishop Oscar Romero and all the saints and martyrs so that our hearts may be open to God's gift and that it will guide our actions no matter what the cost. Whoever makes himself and his life a God ends up spiritually bankrupt. Whoever is willing to sacrifice himself for others is already living the life of heaven. Jesus tells the strong parable of the seed that falls to the ground and dies as the only path to fulfillment. As Jesus says, whoever loves his life will lose it and whoever loses his life will save it. God's unconditional love transforms enemies into friends, cleanses the heart of selfishness, and restores the center of balance to a world disjointed and disoriented by human self-centeredness. Lent is a school for learning how to walk upright. Give your heart 
to the healer and your mind to the teacher and everything will come into focus and balance. If we only want to be self-satisfied, we will postpone our own arrival at true fulfillment. We must ask ourselves, what must die in us? What attitude, quirk, addition, addiction, obsession, anxiety, in order for the seed of God's grace to blossom and bear fruit in and through our lives? This Lenten season, so at least some fellow travelers, co-workers and colleagues, family and friends, strangers may see a glimpse of Jesus in us and through us and come to know the tenderness of Jesus' love for them. A life of generous love and mutual forgiveness leads to the inner life of God. This is the heart of the matter and the secret of life. Dr. Albert Schweitzer, a theologian, humanitarian, philosopher, and physician once said, the purpose of human life is to serve and to show compassion and the will to help others. We all face death, but following Jesus involves another kind of death, death to selfishness and sin. And maybe even, although unlikely, highly unlikely, martyrdom that St. Archbishop Romero experienced. But death to ourselves will lead to life eternal. Besides being the fifth Sunday of Lent, today is also St. Patrick's Day. St. Patrick is a good role model for today's gospel message as well. Whoever serves me must follow me. St. Patrick was said to have taught about the Trinity using the Irish shamrock and left us a beautiful prayer about following Jesus that I would like to end with. Christ with me, Christ before me, Christ behind me, Christ in me, Christ beneath me, Christ above me, Christ on my right, Christ on my left, Christ when I lie down, Christ when I sit down, Christ when I arise, Christ in the heart of everyone who thinks of me, Christ in the mouth of everyone who speaks of me, Christ in every eye that sees me, Christ in every ear that hears me. Amen. Please stand for our profession of faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, life from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things are made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He'll come again in glory to judge the living and the dead and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. United in spirit, let's bring before the Lord our prayers for the church and for the world. For bishops, priests, and all in religious life, may the Holy Spirit continue to bless them and their ministry with abundant spiritual fruits we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For victims of violence, may the Lord bring them healing and consolation and render his justice. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our special prayer intentions written on the ribbons hanging outside to be answered by our holy Lord, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all our beloved dead, May our Savior draw them to himself and welcome them at the table of his heavenly banquet, especially members of our Mass Intention Guild and all of our beloved deceased. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For Nikki Dalton, for whom our sanctuary candle is lit this week, 
We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those needs best spoken in the silence of our hearts, For those needs, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And for Bob Berry, for whom this Mass is offered, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Lord God, in your goodness, hear our prayers and answer them in accordance with your holy will. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Our offertory hymn is number 130. 40 days and 40 nights. Forty days and forty nights You were fasting in the wild Forty days and forty nights Tempted and yet Pray, my sisters and brothers, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice of your hands, the praise and good of his name, for our good and good of all his holy church. Hear us, Almighty God, and having instilled in your servants the teachings of the Christian faith, graciously purify them by the working of this sacrifice through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let's give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God. For you have given your children a sacred time for the renewing and purifying of their hearts that freed from disordered affections, they may so deal with the things of this passing world as to hold rather to the things that eternally endure. And so with all the angels and saints, we praise you as without end we acclaim. Holy, holy.
You are indeed holy, O Lord, the Father of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice. And once more, giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. the mystery of faith. Save us, Savior of the world, for by your cross and resurrection you have set us free. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and to minister to you. Humbly we pray that, partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring it to the fullest of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Sean, our Bishop, the Order of Bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Remember your servant, Bob Berry, whom you have called from this world to yourself. Grant that he who is united with the Son in a death like his may also be one with him in his resurrection. Remember also our brothers and sisters who will fall asleep in the hope of the resurrection. And all who have died in your mercy, welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on all we pray that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the best of the Blessed Apostles, and St. Mary and St. Patrick and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command, and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil, graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as you wait the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. 
For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity accords with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Yes, and let us offer each other the sign of peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Bless those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. Our communion hymn is number 479, Shelter Me, O God.
Our next communion hymn, join me and the choir, if you know it, Lady of Knock. We 
Let us pray. We pray, Almighty God, that we may always be counted among the members of Christ, in whose body and blood we have communion, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Several announcements. Ribbons are still in the foyer for personal prayer intentions. The next St. Mary's men's core group meeting is this Thursday at 7 p.m., a wonderful opportunity for the men of the parish to come together to learn about how important men's participation in the liturgies, in the church, and all aspects of our parish community is so important. If you haven't come, you're most welcome. Cory forms are now due available, are now due for all volunteers and staff. Cories are available after all the masses this weekend. Also, uh, Catholic appeal pledge envelopes. Uh, just want to clear up a little bit of confusion. Um, I know that there are pledge cards that were in the pews that you picked up and you thought about. And uh, uh, last weekend we had the uh, first instance where they were placed in the uh, collection baskets uh, as of last uh, su su Sunday, the last weekend. Um, so we found out that some of the parishioners who have paid sometimes will receive, if they've paid to the Catholic appeal, they will get envelopes from the archdiocese uh, where 
you can make your donations. And then you also indicate what, and I think it's indicated on there what the parish that you're uh, donating from. And it's a case in point where um, those get credited towards us. And it's important because we need 250 in order to be eligible for the rebate. We were fortunate last year because of your generosity, received over $6,000 in a rebate that we received, as we heard Jim Polito uh, mention at uh, uh, two weekends ago. But there is also this past month, in the monthly envelopes that you received, there was an envelope for Catholic Charities, which is different from the Catholic Appeal, uh, a separate entity whatsoever, and that does not get credited towards uh, the church, the parish, for the Catholic Appeal program. So if you have thought about that, you can just go ahead and pick up, there's some in the benches and there's all, also out in the narthex, a pledge card that you can fill out. And if you're not financially able to do so, it's still important that you fill out the card from what parish you are, and uh, even if you're not declaring a contribution. So we appreciate, Father Burton and I appreciate all the support that you give us. On St. Patrick's Day, I have to a little full confession. I was very busy leading up to the 9 a.m. Mass. I ended up by mistake wearing my green vestments. And I said, well, it was by the time I realized it, I had a couple of altar servers that said, hey, Father, do we have the wrong uh, cincture on, you know, because they had the, the Lenten one, and that was too late for me to go back in and change or swap out. So I, I look at it this way. Cardinal Cushing, way back when, uh, was able to give a dispensation to the Archdiocese of Boston, uh, being able to meet when um, St. Patrick's Day fell on a Friday during Lent. So I figured that if Cardinal Cushing gave us a dispensation for that, I figured Cardinal O'Malley shouldn't be that upset the fact that I wore the green vestments at the 9 a.m. Mass. But uh, I could have kept it silent, but I'm sure it'll get around anyway. You don't, you know? So, but anyways, it's... Uh, uh, also, I'll be taking... I hope that you all have a blessed St. Patrick's Day. Uh, uh, and maybe you're going to uh, participate in a boiled dinner. And uh, so I'm going to be taking a survey in the back of the church. I've done it before. Uh, Corned beef or smoked shoulder? I, I actually have a preference for smoked shoulder, but anything that's placed in front of me is fine with me. So again, the sun is coming out. It's going to be a beautiful afternoon, and have a wonderful, blessed St. Patrick's Day, and also a blessed St. Joseph's Day this coming Tuesday. How about the choir, Father? How awesome they sound today. Yes, they, yes, they did. And uh, I, I, speaking of... Speaking, speaking of Cardinal O'Malley, uh, the song, the Irish song, Our Lady of Knock, is one of his favorite songs. So thank you very much, uh, Marge, uh, John, and all of the Adal Choir for the beautiful music today. Please bow your head for God's blessing. Bless, O oh Lord, your people who long for the gift of your mercy and grant that what and your prompting they desire, they may receive by a generous gift through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Mass is ended. Go in peace. And our closing hymn is number 692, I Know That My Redeemer Lives.